Is this an affordable rugged smartphone? Is this a walkie talkie? Is this a massive battery pack? Is this a night vision camera? Am I James Bruce and are you watching MakeUseOf.com reviews? Yes to all of the above, in fact. This is the Doogee S90, the first truly useful modular phone that we've seen come to market. Now, Doogee has consistently managed to differentiate themselves in a very crowded market by making unique and interesting phones. And this, the S90, is no different. Join me, James Bruce, as I take a closer look at the Doogee S90. So the complete package is available now to order on Kickstarter. The ultimate package, which also includes a gamepad, which we don't have with us today, costs $450. Although the base phone alone is $300, and each of the modules is then $30 to $60 each. So you're saving quite a bit by buying it in a full package. So let's take a quick look at this fantastic little pack they sent us. Of course you have the phone itself, more on that later, but in brief you had a massive 6.1H full HD plus notched screen. You've got dedicated hardware buttons for the camera, plus one other customizable button on the side here. It's IP69 rated with rubber covers for the SIM card and the USB-C port at the bottom here, as well as a ruggedized case with bumpers all around the edge. This first module is a walkie-talkie module. Then you have a wireless Qi charging pad. And on the bottom shelf here, you'll find some other bits, including this 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack and night vision camera, as well as various USB accessories and charging bits and a headphone adapter. So let's talk about the phone itself, as that's obviously the main part of this package. It has plain black or orange accents. It's really quite large and pretty hefty at 300 grams with just the basic phone. Inside you'll find a Helio P60 CPU with G72 GPU, 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, as well as a 5050 milliamp hour internal battery, which is needed mainly to power that gorgeous 6.18 inch Full HD Plus screen. However, the included mono speaker is quite tinny, so either hook up headphones or some kind of Bluetooth speaker to fully enjoy movies and videos on that massive screen. You'll also find NFC capabilities and wireless charging, which is nice. The wireless charger works as expected. It has a nice circuit demure design and when you place the phone down on it you'll get a pulsating blue light to indicate it's charging. On the rear of the device you'll find the usual fingerprint sensor, a dual camera system of 16 plus 8 megapixel sensors, as well as an 8 megapixel front camera and the device is running Android 8.1. As is typical on these Chinese phones the SIM tray accepts either dual nano SIMs or you can exchange one of those for a micro SD card to expand your storage. In terms of specs, it's really not that bad. Out of the box, you've got 100 gigabytes of free storage on the device, and then you've got a half decent eight core CPU to back everything up with six gigabytes of RAM. However, I should tell you that the GPU in this isn't currently compatible with Fortnite. Now that may change at a later date, However, at the moment, I wasn't able to get Fortnite installed and running, it just refused to. So if you're thinking about buying this with the gamepad just to play Fortnite, then don't. Other games, however, ran fine. More on performance testing later. All right, let's talk about the camera quality of the lenses built into the phone itself. The good news is that the aperture mode, they call it, where it identifies foreground subjects and then adds in a fake background blur, it's actually really good. Check out these sample shots. Clearly, un unlike other dual camera import phones that I've tested, the sensor here is genuine. It's not one of those fake ones where it just blurs a circle around your point of focus. It is actually able to recognize the foreground subject really well, and you can get some really great shots. This really impressed me. The standard rear camera mode is less great. Check out these sample videos for an idea of the quality there as well. Not bad by any means, but nothing remarkable. And finally, the front selfie cam is also about what I'd expect. Again, nothing remarkable, but a good clear image, certainly. Good enough for selfies and video chatting. Oh, let's see you again. You've got so much hair in your eyes. So let's talk about these add-on modules that clip onto the back of the phone. We got a night vision camera, a battery, and a walkie-talkie to test, and they all work really, really easily. They snap on nicely to the back of the phone, really simply and are then auto-detected by the system. Now, although really secure in normal use, you can pull them straight off again with a little bit of effort. So I'm sure if you dropped it, it wouldn't stay attached. It's more likely that this would get damaged rather than the phone itself. While this is rugged, these additional modules aren't. They're all made of plastic. They feel a little bit tacky, but they get the job done. Now, I'm not sure if it needs saying, but you can only have one of these modules 
on the device at any one time. You can't, for instance, put the battery pack on and then add on the gamepad as well. So firstly, this module is a massive battery pack, 5,050 milliamp hour, which basically doubles the amount of battery that you have on this device. It also, however, turns it into a literal brick. This thing is massive with the battery on it. So this is at least another day's worth of battery that you're going to get out of this, which is great in a rugged phone, of course. The fact that it just clips onto the back and you can carry it around without a separate package is very convenient. Next up is the night vision camera, for which you'll need the special night mode app that they provide. Now, the reason I put that in air quotes is because calling it night vision is a little bit off, I think. To me, night vision is like when you put on a pair of night vision goggles and you can literally see in the dark, everything's in green for some reason, and it uses infrared to illuminate the world around you without actually turning on a visible light. The night vision camera, however, doesn't quite do that. There's no infrared LEDs in here. It's just a super sensitive, larger image sensor. Apparently it amplifies the light around 12 times normal. Now it is also a wider angle lens, so you're gonna get that sort of fisheye distortion that you'll see on action cameras. I did try it in the pitch black, but like I said, it can't actually see in the dark. You do need some sort of light source in order for it to amplify. If there's no light at all, it's got nothing to amplify. However, turning on the flashlight at the same time gave me a much clearer image than I could see with my eyes. So it is really able to take advantage of the light you do have, but won't operate in complete darkness. It's also good then for low light photography and videos, much brighter than what you'd get by default. In this shot, you can compare the default camera output for very low light in my downstairs corridor compared to through the night vision lens. Obviously, it's still very noisy as you'd expect a low light video or photo to be. And one problem I came across is that it's a fixed focus, so you can't say tap on an object to select focus. I'm not sure if that's because it's an early software bug or just the nature of the beast, but there you go. So quite useful in low light, but just don't think you're gonna be sneaking around like James Bond, seeing things in the dark. Finally, we have a walkie-talkie module, which you'll need to screw in this aerial for. Now this is a proper walkie-talkie. It operates on the 400 to 480 megahertz band and has a range of around 10 kilometers, apparently. It doesn't need Wi-Fi or a standard network signal. You can use it even when you don't have those to communicate either with another device or with traditional walkie-talkies on the same band. Obviously, this isn't much use to you if you don't actually use walkie-talkies or if you're not going to be buying multiples of this device. But still, for the niche use cases, this is very cool and a great addition to a rugged phone, obviously. Unfortunately, this is just a prototype. I can't actually test it out yet, so I can't report on how well it works. In terms of performance testing, I was able to run Player Unknown Battlegrounds smoothly. Unfortunately, as I said, Fortnite couldn't be installed, so I couldn't test that one out for you. We don't have a review model of the gamepad available, but that is also in the Kickstarter, and I expect it's very similar to the previous S70 model, which worked well. There is also a game mode available, which you launch, and then it shuts down some background processes, stops notifications, that sort of thing. It's not gonna give you a huge performance boost to your phones, but it is gonna get rid of some of those little annoyances while playing. Now, Antutu scored the device at around 132,000, which isn't amazing. It's not in the top 50 phones. Geekbench refused to run, but PC Mark, the Work 2.0 test, scored it just under 6,800, which is a lot more impressive. Puts it in line with a Galaxy S8 but a few hundred short of the Google Pixel 2, for instance. Now, the Doogee S90 is running a custom launcher, which you can replace. However, the default browser is a bit suspiciously set to use start.fyi as a search engine, which is less than trustworthy, but of course, you can just use Chrome instead and customize the launcher as you like, such as the nature of Android. So should you buy or back or pre-order the Doogee S90? If the modular approach interests you and you're looking for a rugged smartphone with a massive screen, then it's obviously worth a look. Performance might not be top of the line, but the interchangeable modules are certainly cool and the massive battery pack is going to be useful. So if you want to grab that discount while you can, head on over to the Kickstarter link and back it now. You have about two weeks from the date of this video to get in on the Kickstarter still. The all-in ultimate package is about 450 or you can customize your own package with the modules you want. However, if the modular approach doesn't really interest you, you're not looking to get any of the extra modules with it, then it's probably worth looking elsewhere. While I wouldn't say the modular approach is a gimmick, it does involve extra circuitry and therefore drives the price up on this device compared to similarly spec 
other phones. It is certainly a cool looking rugged phone with a big bright screen and good overall battery life. Now Doji has said that other modules are on the way and in development now. For instance, a 5G module to allow you to make use of newer networks. However, for exactly how long Doji is going to support this phone and keep making modules is anyone's guess. Hopefully, if the modular approach takes off, they would put the same interface on the next upgrade of the phone and then you can reuse those modules that you've already bought. But who knows how it'll turn out. Anyway, thanks for watching this special pre-release review of the Doji S90 versatile rugged smartphone. We'd really appreciate a like or if you have other comments or questions, head down to the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. Also be sure to subscribe to this channel for our twice weekly reviews and giveaways as well as the occasional tech tips and DIY tech tutorials. Thanks for watching and until next time.